Hey guys, welcome back. Warbomb here, bringing you another episode of our PTCGO live content videos. Now today, people, today I want to say good morning. Uh, I'm very sleepy, but it's fine because I want to record a video for you guys. I want to try out Spirit Tomb. I built this really weird makeshift Spirit Tomb deck. Uh, I feel like Spirit Tomb and Hustle Belt are just made for each other, so I decided to play this, and uh, here's what I got so far. Before we get into the video, don't forget to drop a like, it's always greatly appreciated, subscribe, share, all that good jazz. Answer the common question of the day being, do you have any really weird, quirky decks you guys really like playing? Like, something completely, like, something just, like, random that you guys just put together one day, and you're just like, oh, this is fun. Let me know in the comments down below, and I might even play it, who knows. And also, small updates, um... Shout out to Guardian Gaming, as always, my lovely sponsors. I want to say that they did up the percentage, so now if you buy codes there and if you use code ORBOM, you actually get 10% off instead of the 5% off we used to get off because we've been doing so well with them. So definitely go check them out. Apparently, a lot of you guys have loved buying codes there, and I appreciate it. On top of that, they decided that for every set, they're going to give us two booster boxes, one for me to open, which in turn will probably be like a giveaway of what I pull. Because uh, I don't, unless like... There's cards I really need in that box. I usually don't collect the cards, I usually just give them away. So there'll probably be two separate giveaways from now on. One of the cards I opened and I give away, like the Ultra Rares probably, I'll probably hold on to the bulk because I think the bulk is expensive. And uh, two, an actual booster box itself. And once again, like I've been mentioning in the past few videos, that's just like based on liking and commenting all the videos that we've had since since we started playing um, Unbroken Bonds decks. So thank you, Guardian Gaming, for being amazing sponsors. Uh, but anyways, <clears throat> Spirit Tomb. Is there anything else I want to talk about? Oh yeah, I already asked a couple questions today. Dope. Love you guys. Anyway, Spirit Tomb. 60 HP, pretty low. With an interesting ability that lets it damage itself, one damage counter per turn per turn, and then that immediately ties in with its attack, Anguish Cry, which does 30 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So obviously, if you have 5 damage counters on you, you hit for 160, but 160 is just the tip of the iceberg, because we also have Hustle Belt, which if you have 30 or less remaining HP while while um, having damage counters on you, your attacks do 60 more damage. It's a double choice ban, uh, and it works so well in Spirit Tomb. So, like, your 160 becomes 220. And then, obviously, you have cards like Shrine of Punishment as well that can help against these those big GX decks that we can't exactly OCO. So, I think it's a really cool concept. Uh, the whole deck is kind of surrounded around, like, making this concept work very efficiently while also having other type of attackers or, like, you know, higher HP attackers that can still chunk your opponent uh, while also, you know, charging up these dudes in the back. So we have the four spirit tombs and like I said earlier, the the, the chunkers, the high HP chunkers. We got Buzzwall uh, for such hammer. We all know what such hammer does. And the Kartana, not as high HP, but it does give you a free pivot because it is a free retreat. And with the attack big cut, it's not bad either. We are playing obviously Rainbow Energy in this deck. Rainbow Energy just pairs well with the spirit tombs because it damages you, speeding up that process. <sighs> Excuse me. Of course, our tag team finisher, Beast Game GX, is just a great way to take two prizes at once. Um, so, against tag teams, like think about think think about it like this, right? If we're playing against a Reshizard, we hit them for 220, we finish them off with another 50 damage GX attack, and essentially take what five prizes. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> if we lead with it, that sucks because. Obviously, my opponent's probably going to take three prizes off me. But if we don't lead with it, with all of our other Pokemon, we are playing ten Pokemon, so there's nine other potential leads that are much better. Then we'll be fine, right? Two Mews, because Weezing is just too strong right now. So, uh, there's not really... Like, Mew doesn't do too much versus Weezing, but it does buy you a turn. Um, obviously, if we're playing against Weezing, I'm going to do my best to not damage my own Spear Tombs too much. Uh, one thing I was considering in this deck was like Ace Rollas or Max Potion or something like that just to help me versus Weezing. But Weezing is kind of like an auto loss anyways versus these type of decks. So I'm just going to do what I can versus Weezing. Spirit Tomb is still, after all, just a one prize attacker. As long as we like... Oop, I'm getting a phone call. Hopefully it's not important. And it's my girlfriend. She can wait. <laughs> That's probably mean. But anyways... Uh, <laughs> um... I forgot what I was saying, but hopefully Weezing is not too bad of a matchup. We are playing, playing two Field Blower to help us deal with Weezing a little bit, so that's good. Not to mention, we still have, we're still we still our Dark-type deck, kind of. So I am playing the uh, Black Market, which should put us the edge on we against Weezing if we do if we do get it early enough. So that's pretty good in its own right. Um, we are playing the two Mews. Also, Mew has Psy Power, which could sometimes be really useful for putting things in range of Spear Tomb. And then we have one Hilego, just being able to use that Nightcap attack uh, is really, really nice on the right turns. 
Everything else is kind of like support for getting these Pokemon line to work. One of the big item I like using is Damage Mover. Not only is Damage Mover is good for putting things immediately in Spear Tomb range, but also you can potentially put some of these other attackers in range as well. Heal them at the same time kind of thing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of like pseudo healing versus Muck where you can put all the damage counters onto one Pokemon that will be knocked out anyways, leading, leaving your other Pokemon not being knocked out. Um, and it, and it could potentially put things in Hustle Belt range with your Buzzwalls and Kartanas and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty handy in its own right. So that's why I like it. Um, two blowers, like I mentioned earlier, four Nest Ball, uh, four Poke Gear, two Stretcher. I want to play three, but I had to make cuts, so I had to cut one Stretcher. I believe we're still playing four Ultra Ball. There's a lot of Pokemon in this deck, and you kind of need to grab your Pokemon early, specifically your Spirit Tombs, which is why I'm playing the Ultra Balls at a four count. Usually I wouldn't be playing four Ultra Balls, but. Um, because whenever we have nest balls, but because of how important it is to get your spirit tombs down in a lot of different matchups so they can start damaging themselves immediately, it's pretty handy to have those four extra ultra balls. Like I mentioned earlier, we have our four uh, one black market and three shrine of punishments. I was playing devoured field in this deck to make that damage output 230, but I found that that's never really helped. And then a shrine of punishment kind of does the same thing, anyway. So for Bills analysis, I've been really liking using Bills recently. Bills just helps you search for the right item cards you need. You don't, like, in the, this deck is not super combo heavy. It's just get down your Pokemon as quickly as you can. So I find that Bills does a better job at doing that as far as getting me the right items at the right time than things like uh, Draw Sports does. But I still think you need Draw Sports to find your energies. So I still am playing for Cynthia, two Guzma, and, uh, she's me good. And, um, one Judge and let's see four hustle belt because i love this uh four rainbow energy and i believe seven dark energy give me enough energy to find throughout the game and that's gonna be the deck guys go ahead and get ourselves a couple of games i'll be back when i find one and i don't know if i'm gonna cut this out but i have to quickly talk to my girlfriend um oh i guess i shouldn't call her hey <clears throat> i'll just go i'll just send her a mass message um I know we we're playing against, but I didn't I didn't see the types because I was looking at my phone, but let me quickly send my send her a message real quick. Alright, Spirit Tomb lead, Cynthia start, Rainbow Energy. Not bad. I mean we can start this turn by hitting them for 80. No, not 80, um 70? Yeah, 70. What are we playing against? Something with the teeny sleeves. I don't know what that means. Why is my Facebook open? I apologize, guys. Let me close my Facebook. Um, I didn't think I saw Psychic, so I don't think we're playing against Weezing. I'm just going to try to dodge the Weezing matchup today. Uh, matchups that are going to be kind of hard, though, are non-GX matchups. We're going to have to hope that our Buzzmosa comes into play. Uh, oh, we might be playing against Lost March. Is Lost March a bad matchup? I mean... We get an immediate beast game versus Lost March. So that's pretty handy. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon we can target with beast game. I don't have the beast energy in this deck. Um, but you could try, you can put it in, I guess. I don't, I just don't think it's that worth it. Um, we did get Marsh Shadow though, and we don't play Marsh Shadow of our own, so. It's gonna be kind of annoying. So these hustle belts aren't gonna be the most useful this matchup. Shrine won't be that great, but the stadium will be. We have the top deck out of this now, though. Um, I was considering playing Mars Shadow, but I just didn't feel like I would ever. Not that I don't think I would need it, but more along the lines like I don't really feel comfortable putting down a Mars Shadow on my bench in like this weird wheezing meta where it could just be targeted because I don't like being forced to play. You know what I mean? But right now I'm kind of wishing I had it. Um, we can attack, but we won't be hitting for too much damage. I guess we'll just do this real quick. Get down another Spear Tomb. I don't know what else I would play here. I don't have a Rainbow Energy or else I could like immediate, immediately attack with Buzzmosa to take a knockout one of those bench dudes. Um, is there a point in attacking if I don't take a knockout? Not really. I don't know, we have the top deck. That's really all I can say. I mean, we have a bunch of outs and like, we have a few outs, I should say. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm not even gonna attach the energy because like I said, if I'm not taking an Oko, there's no point in attacking. But my opponent will be taking an Oko here as long as they have an energy card.
Hmm, excuse me. There's a lost blunder. Probably just a draw. Surprised they didn't use jump bluff first. Like you think you would do that beforehand so that you don't get yourself a jump bluff off the draw. Oh, maybe they had like all their jump bluffs in the deck. I don't, I don't really get it, but it's fine. Okay, so he can attack this turn. Uh, we do take a knockout, which means if he doesn't have anything else in his turn right in his hand right now, we have a chance of like being able to do something. Because we know he has an energy in his hand. What's that last card in his hand, though? I don't know. Hopefully it's not anything good. That'd be ideal. Let's see what it is. A rank grew. That sucks. Um, I mean, maybe he'll still be stuck, though. I mean, three cards is not... Mm, mount, oh my god, if he lands this. I mean, if he lands this, regardless, it doesn't matter, right? But we know we're not top decking anything useful. Alright, so he doesn't have a supporter. So that's pretty cool. But we might just get donked here because of the Marsh Shadow. Um, let's see what happens. Ultra Ball does not help me right now. Like I said, there's no point in doing anything in my hand until it matters. So unless he couldn't whiff and knock out next turn, we should be, we might be okay. It's not what I need right now. I could have Ultra Ball just to like guarantee we don't lose the game. But that we wouldn't be able to attack, right? And like, I don't feel like there's a point in like making this last too much longer. We have a bunch of outs though. Like, we have four Bills, four Cynthia's, four Poke Gears. So I think we just need Marsh Shadow, which sucks. I hate whenever I am forced. And okay, Guzma's not bad. I'd rather him get Guzma than anything else. Um, so he's just thinning out his hand for a Ranguru. Please do not land anything good here. Just show me that sweet pass. Alright, so he doesn't have anything right now. Come on, top decks. Oh my goodness. Alright, I have to get a Pokemon now, don't I? Alright, let's just grab another Spirit Tomb. And then I'll put down the Black Market. No point in my damaging myself further. I guess there technically is a point because of a Ranguru, but... Uh, I guess there's no point in not damaging myself further. I get O-Code regardless by everything. I don't have resistance of any kind. Uh, so yeah, just in case, I guess if I can target down that Oranguru. Alright, so we're kind of getting lucky here. Let's see how lucky we can get, though. We did run out of... We are losing three of our seven dark energies. Come on, prizes. That's not what I need right now. He already used, I believe, three Trumbeaks? Two Trumbeaks, okay. I'm afraid of him using more. And then, like, me losing because of it. Let's see. I just need to survive a couple more turns so that I can eventually draw to this situation. All right, he can start attacking me with this. So that's pretty scary. Did he land something? No, he didn't, okay. So he doesn't take a prize off this, which is good, but I literally can't do much. Cause he takes an Oko on me regardless. Oh my goodness. Well guys, that's game. What a waste. All right, well, that's fine. Let's move on to the next game. I don't know what I could have done about that besides actually playing Marshadow, but I don't think it's worth playing Marshadow. I, I don't know. Maybe it is. It's just another Pokemon that will just soak up damage versus Weezing. Because you're going to be forced to play it at some point, right? Oh, boy. All right, let's just play Marshadow. It's just another bad lead, though. I hate it. I hate leading Marshadow. It always makes me so sad. Uh, Marshadow over Judge. Whatever. Whatever. That means two bad leads, which is not good. That means we will get bad leads more often than not. But, I mean, obviously Marshadow could have done something. It could have also done nothing, but it could have done at least something, right? I didn't think I'd be Marshadowed out of the game so easily, though, when I have 12 outs. Like, 12. And, like, Trumbig didn't even get any of the outs, so it was just, like, legitimately just me not getting anything. Oh well. We're playing against fire. Uh, this could be a lot of things. Probably Reshizard. Um, so hopefully it's Reshizard so I can play against Reshizard. I would like to play against Reshizard. I feel like every deck, every time I build a video... Um, say look, my outs, guys. They exist, I promise. Um, every time I, I build a deck that's just like, oh, I want to use this deck versus Reshizard, I never see the Reshizard. Bad lead, but I mean, whatever. Put on a little bit of pressure here.
Oh, we might be playing against Bicephalon as well. I didn't actually look at all their cards, but I saw a bunch of Fire Crystals. Like, I mean, you'd still play Fire Crystals in Rush Star, don't get me wrong. It just feels weird. I don't know if I want to attach my Hustle Belts immediately, just because I know these decks play Field Blower. So, there's the Mew lead. And it doesn't really help us too much. Pokemon Fan Club. All right. <laughs> all right. Not at all what I thought it was. This could be Unknown Hand. If it's Unknown Hand, that's a little bit more problematic. That means we have like six turns to win the game, and then we had a really bad lead as well. Which means we have to find like a Guzma, right? That's not super great. And we have two Spirit Tooth Prize as well. I don't think it matters too much because, like, oh, we also have Buzzmosa. Okay. So Buzzmosa is probably going to have to be our lifeline at some point. Well, I don't really know how, like, Buzzmosa can do it, though. We'll see what, we'll see what deck he's playing before I start. Uh, going too hard into the um, tell them hello. Um, before I go too hard into the Buzzmosa play, but I might do some jet punches into a Buzzmosa finisher later. Uh, let me go ahead and just do this, and that should be all I need for the rest of the game, I think. Maybe one more damage just to knock out Salazzles. We need to get our Guzma though. Like I have to be able to switch, and I don't have a switching card. I could use this turn to Sledgehammer once, and then try to finish it off with Buzzmosa later. Yeah, we're definitely playing against Unknown Hand, so we have our one Marsh Shadow in the deck that hopefully we can use at some point. <laughs> but this this Buzzmosa, this Buzzwell lead sucks. I could have spent that last turn attaching to the active. I only do play two good ones, so maybe that is something I should have done. <clears throat> he did get a really early Gladion too. Because I, I whiffed my first knockout, so that's really, really bad. It re this is exactly why I was considering not playing the thing. He's going to target me down, too. Huh. I can't do much about this because I don't play a switch card. <sighs> Alright, so Buzzmosa is going to have to be my lifeline, I think. We're going to see if we can find a Guzma off this. Okay, I have a very small chance. Can Damage Rover do it for me? Um, it should be able to heal me from the three and put it onto the active. So that's pretty cool. The three over here to over here. There we go. So that should stop this thing from immediately taking a knockout on me. Uh, I guess I'll save Poke Gear for next turn. So damage mover, well, I showed off the healing part of damage mover, so that's cool. This thing can't actually damage me, um, can't finish me off right now because of damage mover. So that's pretty cool. Alright, so can we win this game before he gets his full hand? We'll have to see. He already has two Solandits down. So we're going to have to just take a prize every turn, and then Bozmos is going to have to take two. Uh, luckily, he didn't move that to the back, so it's just a matter of me shuffle drawing until I get a combination of Guzma and Rainbow Energy. I am gonna play down the Buzzmosa as soon as I get it, though, because I don't have to. I don't have to worry about him doing any shenanigans. And then, like Jet Punch is not a bad attack in this game. Obviously, I can't take an immediate knockout on anything uh, because of the Mew on the bench. But in a perfect world, I can Guzma up that Mew and finish it off with a GX attack and take two prizes immediately. I'm in, I'm going to attempt to get Marshadow now that is ah, uh, but not. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, it might be too early again, Marshadow. Another damage mover. Um, I mean, I could just attach and retreat and start taking knockouts, so I'm not gonna bother with the Pokey Gear right now. There's the Buzzmosa. Uh, this, how good is this? My opponent's never gonna have two prize cards, right? So it's not that great. Um, we retreat and just start taking knockouts. And yeah. English Cry. Never gonna, I don't think, unless I'm attacking a uh, Salazzle, I don't think I'm ever gonna increase my damage on myself. It's another Nest Ball, that's pretty good. Gets me another Spear Tomb. Alright, let's see what we can do. We know he has one other Salazzle in hand. So that's two Salazzles. I wanna start targeting those Salazzles for knockouts. Uh, can we beat this? I'm, I'm still like, I don't know. I haven't personally played this deck yet. 
I know that I should because you guys want me to, but I haven't played it yet, so I'm I'm not too sure as to like how long the uh, <laughs> the timer is for me. Like I don't know how how many turns it takes for him to pull this off. Essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Key factory, we can bump at some point. Should I bump it now though? That's the question. I could try right now to get like Ultra Ball Marshadow. Ooh, I can knock this out too, but then Mew can take a knock it on me. So I need to get another Spirit Tomb here. And since he doesn't have a way to retreat into the Oranguru next turn as well, I think maybe now is a good time to play Marshadow. I'm so, I'm like, it's so hard for me to say because like, I don't have experience with this deck. Maybe I give it one more turn. I doubt he can do it all next turn. So what does he have right now? Six prizes, so 50. So it's, I think Unknown Hand is 32. I have to double check Unknown Hand because it's one of those times where I really do need to double check. Um, unknown Hand. Uh, let me go ahead and get Spear Tomb. This is just to thin the deck after all. As much as I can. I guess what I don't need this, so let's use it real quick. Um, I don't want to bench this. Okay, let me think about this. So he has 19 cards left in the deck with a 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 discard pile, 6, 8 plus 6 is 14. Um, unknown hand is 35, so he needs to have 25 cards remaining somewhere so six uh he could do it maybe let's see i guess there's ultra ball there's shrine it's kind of what i wanted so i don't think i'm gonna do it this turn he won't be able to oranguru this turn and he has two four six seven eight nine nine plus nine is nine plus eight is seventeen seventeen plus six is 23 he has to play the unknown and switch so he doesn't have enough cards right now so i'm not gonna do it this turn but i will damage myself here do i have enough to take a knockout anyways 36 and 9 i don't actually have enough to take a knockout oh shoot um huh Oh no, I think, okay, I'm going to have to march out of that. Because I need to take a knockout every turn, right? Which means I'm going to have to spend, I have to get a damage mover now. Or a rainbow energy. Oh, I can't get a rainbow energy, it has to be a damage mover. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, this is really premature. No, we didn't get it. But Hustle Belt doesn't. That was probably really bad, I'm not going to lie. damage myself so that should put me in range of hitting enough all right there we go yeah we just we almost missed we almost completely missed that um and by we i mean me <laughs> all right so he can't go into a ranguru this turn which gives me a few turns hopefully to take a few more knockouts i just need two more turns i really need to find the beast energy or the the rainbow energy though so it's it's now just coming down to can i find my last two rainbow energies He needs to get down on a Ranguru. Um, he need, for sure needs to get down on a Ranguru. And what else? There's the Ranguru. He needs to attach to it so that he can immediately attack next turn. Uh, Guzma could be pretty good here just to knock out the Ranguru. <clears throat> but if I, I think if I pressure the Ranguru every turn, he, he won't be able to do it. Because from what I've seen, I've seen gameplay of this deck. But, like, obviously, I don't pay attention to the videos that I watch. <laughs> when I watch YouTube videos, usually whenever I'm doing homework. So I think if I can Guzma up... Oh, there's a rainbow. Mm, okay, if I can find Guzma, I think... What's the retreat cost? Okay, we're going to have to try to find two of our Guzmas. Let me double check to see if I have two Guzmas in the deck. Please tell me I have both Guzmas. Okay, I do have both Guzmas. Alright, so I think this turn, for sure, we need to try to target down this Oranguru. There's one. 
This is such a hard turn. All right, let me let me do this now. It's so like it's gonna be so difficult to find both Guzmas to win the game that I'm debating if I should try to find if I should just GX right now and try to find an energy next turn instead. It might be easier to GX now and find an energy to retreat later. That it will be. That will be enough, maybe. Let me do that now, I think. I think I think this is the play. Because it's gonna be so difficult to guarantee this later when we only play two, and we've already used a lot of Poke Gears, that I think it is my best interest to just be able there's the energy we need for retreating. So so far, so good. At this point, we don't really need much else. I probably I forgot to damage myself, but it's fine. <clears throat> We'll see if he can pull it off in time. We don't have another Mars Shadow, so I don't know if we'll be able to actually stop it. I'm not too sure if that was the right play or not, but we literally just have two more turns left to pull this off. So if we can, if we can, if he doesn't pull it off in the next few turns, we might have it. We'll have to see. He does draw his entire deck next turn though, so he might be able to pull it off now. This is what I mean by like you don't want to whiff your turn, your first turn knockout. If we didn't lead Buzzwall, I feel like we 100% had this game. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, actually we did, because we didn't get to attack turn one with Buzzwall. So, yeah, if we didn't lead Buzzwall, it would have been fine. Because we could have attacked with Buzzwall at some other point, and then Guzmud for a game. Uh, Guzmud for the GX attack. It's really hard to tell. He's playing... I don't really get that out of the fan club, though. I don't know. I mean, I guess it works. So, he draws 9 cards. He might have the final Salazzle, which would be 12 cards. Uh, that's not his entire deck, though. And he has 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. Plus, that's 15. So, I don't know if he'll be able to pull it off. But anyways, I don't really know what I'm trying to do here besides take a knockout, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, let me go ahead and damage myself just in case Mew comes in and messes me up. Maybe I should try to find my last rainbow energy just to attach here. Ooh, Guzma could be good. Guzma kind of solidifies the game for me because I can take a different knockout. Yeah, I mean, Anguish Cry. Alright, it's coming down to this. This is the final turn. With the Guzma in hand, and he, there's no way he can, like, obviously judge me or march out of me, because this deck doesn't do that. Uh, it really just comes down to this turn. He has to have the Switch and the Unknown as well, which is minus two more cards. So, with the deck being the way it is, with two, four, six, seven, eight, eight plus six is fourteen... Plus two is 16, and his discard pile has too many cards in it. Even if he gets a bunch of fire crystals, that's another at least two, right? So it's 18. I guess he could still do it. He could still do it, so we'll have to see if he can do it or not. He, he can't draw his entire deck, though, so he has to find another card that searches through his deck. Um, without And without many Pokemon left in the deck here, he can't use Elm to search through his deck. So I think we have it. <clears throat> Let's see. I think we have it. We have the Guzma in hand, so we can solidify an attack next turn. Um, I guess he does have three Pokemon, right? Well, does he? No. Uh, as far as I'm aware, he only has Mew down there and Oranguru in the deck. And he has to keep one bench space open. So there's the fourth Salazzle. That could be a problem. Oh, man. That's 12 altogether. Uh... Five cards. I mean, he might have it. It's looking kind of scary. 
Some kind of, I don't think he has it though. I, I'm super confident he doesn't have it. But I could be completely wrong. Let's find out. Six, two, four, six, eight, nine, fifteen, uh, twenty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty. Yeah, he doesn't have it. All right, cool. We're good. He doesn't have this turn. He needs to find. He needs to draw his entire deck to have it, right? Because there's thirty gone. Yeah, there we go. There's a W for this deck, taking a knockout every single turn. All right, cool. Good job, Spirit Tomb. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Even whiffing that first turn knockout, so Spirit Tomb really showing its worth. That Hustle Belt really showed off its worth as well. Obviously, it could have been avoided if I didn't misplay, but the fact that we had the Hustle Belt to increase the damage output was super clutch there. So that's pretty cool. That was really close. I'm not going to lie. Have my heart a pitter pattern. Uh, opening hand sucks. I don't know what we're playing against though. Am I recording? I am recording, right? Okay, yeah, okay. I had to double check. That was really scary. Uh, are we going first? We are going first, so I'm not gonna touch it. Um, alright, it looks like we're fine. Viridian, Welders, uh, I, I don't know what we're playing against. Could be any sort of fire deck. I'm not too sure which one. I saw Adventure Bag, which kind of makes me want to say it's, uh, is Buzzwell. No, not Buzzwell. Um, okay. Um, the other one. <laughs> the Cephalon, my favorite one. Alright, so we're not going to need Mew this game. Uh, can he get a turn one attack? He might be able to. Hopefully Pokegear can find me something, because this is going to decide what I use. Bills, okay. Bill, you need to find me some Nets Balls. I don't really want an Ultra Ball, because I don't really know how I want to approach this game yet. So, can you find me a... Oh, he couldn't find me a Nest Ball. Okay. We have Cynthia for next turn, though, so I can actually use this Ultra Ball to find me something. Um, probably drop the Bills? I kind of want to keep the... Uh, I don't know what we're playing against yet, so I don't want to lose any of the cool cards. So, spend this turn getting another Spear Tomb. Dropping you and, I guess, the Damage Mover for now. Although, that could really speed up a Knockout next turn if I needed to. There's a, uh, no, we don't need the Mew. That's right. Let me get the Mew. That's what it was. Uh, and Spirit Tomb, we have one prized, so not the end of the world there. We have Buzz Mosa prize, which could be a problem, especially if it was our last prize. It's going to be what we use to close out a lot of games, so hopefully it's not too much of an issue. I don't know if I should attach this turn. I'm really scared of attaching this turn, so I don't think I'm going to. I could obviously play my Stadium and things like that, but obviously these decks play Heat Factor, and I don't want to play down this until, like, the end of the game, <clears throat> when we can really stop my opponent from taking prizes. So I'm not gonna bother playing down that card until a few stadiums have been dropped already. We can we can we're gonna test the stadium more thanks to our shrines. So if we can bump if we can play enough shrines down, we should be okay. Stop them from thing playing things like Ultra Space or Heat Factory or whatever. It's Viridian Forest as we saw. So I don't think this is baby Psephon, because I did see the forest, but the forest is not bad. It could be Psephon GX. This uh, Psephon GX is a deck I do play forest in for the welders, but I don't play Salazzle anymore. I don't think you should play both Salazzle and Forest and Welders. It's, it seems like a lot to me. Uh, but we'll see. As you guys know, Slab Belcephalon GX is one of my favorite decks. I have so many videos of that deck. Uh, lots of them, a different build, different things. I have a live deck matchup coming up with Belcephalon versus Picaram soon. Um, so hopefully that video can be finished. I have to like edit it, and also I think there was a lot of issues with like because I'm still working on how to make my my phone record the games easier. And the biggest concern I'm having right now is that for whatever reason, if anything were to interrupt my phone, either a phone call or a message of some kind, my phone will stop recording, I think. I don't know. We had a bunch of games that had worked full games, but only recorded the first six minutes. All right, Volcania kind of makes me think it's Charizard with a with a Salazzle engine. There's the Heat Factory, so that's really good that we can immediately drop that. But the question is, do I want to? Because I know he has Forest. We do take a knockout next turn since we hit 70, so that's pretty cool. So unless he finds a switch and attacks with Volcanion, we should be fine. <clears throat> well, let's see. He played Cynthia, so there's no Welder. So this can get a turn one attack off, but it doesn't matter. Perfect, so we get an immediate attack. Rainbow Energy is cool, but I'm going to save the Rainbow Energy for different types. I'm going to go ahead and just building Spite right now. So that's a knockout, so we get the immediate knockout, which is great. 
And I think I'll just Cynthia here. I don't really see a point in doing much else. Like I said, I want to hold on to this for later. Oh, so close. <laughs> we're really close to pulling off this. We also don't have an energy. So we're going to have to find a draw supporter. And just go ahead and take a knockout. Right, hopefully the draw support will come into play here soon. Another nest ball is great. Gets me another spear tomb on the board. Buzzwool can also come into play and take a knockout. There's the Reshizard, so we're going to want to find that shrine very soon. If you can whiff a knockout here, that could be nice. Let me take another. I could take another prize if I get a damage mover, I think. Especially if I, if I can find shrine. Actually, I don't need damage mover. I have this. Never mind. Um, damage mover is kind of looking like, I mean, it's really good when it comes into play. You guys saw how it saved me versus the, uh, versus the Mew. Ooh, that, this is going to be annoying. <laughs> that's going to be very annoying. Well, I'm burned and poisoned, so we should be fine. No, actually, that's okay. It's not a knockout, not an immediate knockout at least, which means we can actually save our hustle belt for this dude. Unless he attacks me, like if he can damage me this turn, that is good. It's a knockout regardless if he can attack me or not, though. Which makes me think if he actually wants to use a Salazzle this turn, or if he's just going to use a Flare Starter. Obviously, Flare Starter isn't as strong right now. If we can find Shrine, that's going to be so strong. Because he won't be able to heal both of these. Uh, if he plays Meltank, he can, but like only one at a time for the most part. So that should be an easy, easy one up for us. Okay. So we're going to get knocked out no matter what next turn. I'm going to attach one Hustle Belt because that can be blowed away. Oh, we even found an energy card. That's just gorgeous. We can use uh, Bills this turn then pretty safely. Honestly, if we can find Damage Mover, we can remove all this damage real quick and put it onto a different Pokemon, meaning we won't be knocked out next turn. So let me try that. We found the Shrine. No Damage Mover though. Um, Nest Ball could be okay. I think I'm going to play the, grab the Cynthia instead because I need to draw Supporter anyways. <clears throat> Alright, let's do this. Uh, maybe I don't attach his energy yet. I definitely play the shrine for sure. Let me damage myself real quick. I don't think I attached the energy yet. Um, I really wish I found the damage mover though. That would have been super hype. We get a knockout here. Yeah, I know he won't be able to Guzma me. I know that much. So I'm gonna attach an energy now because uh, I mean, like if I find Rainbow next turn, we hit him for 220, which is huge. But is it super necessary? I don't really think it is. He's gonna take two knockouts though with this with these dudes. I think we'll be fine though. Let me go ahead and Anguish Cry. I, this is a really hard turn for me. I think we'll be fine. Let me Anguish Cry for now. Because if I can hit him for a bunch of damage with our uh, with our with our dude with our with our belts, uh, then we'll be in a really good position. This Ultra Ball helps a lot too because we can actually because we will we will go down to four prizes here, so we actually have a boosted Buzzwell turn. We just have to find the uh, Rainbow Energy, which is kind of annoying because I don't really want to play. I don't really not I don't really not want to attach, but because I was like so afraid of like random. Like just sort of like he has ways to attack me, but I guess I guess I probably was safe attaching the bench because I mean escape rope is a thing too. I don't know there's so many outs, there's so many possibilities to where like I feel like if I attach the energy, it'd be a bad thing. I'm messing my friend real quick. Oh, we got judged. Oh, that sucks. Uh, oh, no, it's not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. We do have the immediate Guzma Buzzwall play, but we did lose our energy. But we have Ultra Ball, so maybe that could be useful. Shrine is gone, though, so I really... I'm going to have to spend a turn attacking a Buzzwall. Uh, um, a, uh... Oh, he attached there, though. Hmm. We might have a really good advantage here, then. Because we can take a knockout here, meaning all I have to do is take a knock is 
This is actually, this could be really good. I think I still will grab the Buzzle because I do want to target a Charizard. Kartana could do the same thing though. Kartana does do the same thing, right? Well, I mean, in my case, no, Buzzwell is one of my opponent. This is actually works out better, right? I, I, was, I met Kartana when I kept saying Buzzwell. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So Kartana can damage that, that Buzzwell over there with all the energies on it. I think I'm gonna hold on to this Nest Ball for a attack for the, um, for finishing off my opponent. This is a free retreater as well, which is something to keep in mind. Let me damage myself real quick. Um, something to keep in mind. I guess damage remover would work still because we want to be knocking ourselves out just in case I get... No, we would be knocking ourselves out. But we were going to be at five next turn anyway, so it doesn't matter too much. All right, we're going to hold on to this Ultra Ball because it gets me more shadow. All right, cool. So we're going to hit this man for 130 and making it really, really easy to finish the game off because we can always goose him up one of these dudes for game. <coughs> of course... If he plays smart, then that's not going to come into play, right? Because he's going to just give me the Buzzmosa, the other Reshizard for the rest of the game. I really want to find my last shrine, and now's a pretty good time to start finding my uh, um, my other stadium as well, the Black Market. I like this deck because it's really big brain, but I like it's hard. It's too early in the morning for me to big brain. Also, I cough like three times this video. I do apologize, guys. I'll try to cut out all those coughs, but there's no promises. At least I can tell where the audio spike is. <clears throat> there's the escape board. That's adorable. All right. Well, if he gives me a non GX attacker, uh, then we do have a Pokemon that we can knock out before we knock this out, which means we're just one Guzma away from knocking this out for the most part. So I guess there's some handiness in that. gonna go into this yeah that's why i thought all right cool this does not this does get knocked out actually but if he attaches energies to it uh then we're gonna get knocked out ourselves which he's not doing so that's really great actually he could still manually attach right which would be a high heat blast knockout but we are gonna knock him out ourselves with a spirit tomb if we can just find energy so now we're just like on the energy hunt luckily i didn't attach that one energy that one turn so we're now just on the hunt for our final guzma and an energy card you know, I was thinking in my head, what if I top deck Guzma right now? That would have been possibly worst case scenario. Let me grab Marshadow here. All right, Marshadow, I need you to find me an energy because this is a very important turn. Find me two energies and a Guzma just to close out the game. Close. Uh, this, if you have, if it has exactly two prize cards remaining. Uh, I'm gonna hold on to that, of course. Let me damage myself here. Still no shrine, and honestly, we're gonna have a pretty stuck hand again. But hopefully, this prize can get us something. Anguish Cry for 160. Yep. Come on, prize, hook me up. I'm just a Reshizard away from winning. That's not what I wanted. <coughs> give me a Guzma. Like, if you can get me a Guzma top deck, Poke Gear into Guzma right now, show me the mad money. We have a few turns to, to start. Marine, we're talking. So I'm gonna tell you guys a story about my best friend's birthday that we're doing. All the arcs are short, so, and like, he wants me to do, we're doing like a, I forget what it's called, but it's like this discussion party, where we have like, three minute presentations over things that we like, and, uh, uh, so three minute presentations over things we like, with a, what's it called, with a punishment if we go every three minutes that we, every, every three minutes, so it's not three minute presentation, it's like, uh, you have to present, and for every three minutes that you present, you have to get punished for taking too long, but it's encouraged that you take too long kind of thing. Um, God, I, I guess I have to go Marshadow here, huh? I'm so afraid of Guzmas now, though. Hmm.
Oh boy, we have a few turns. I'm gonna have to get another spirit tune, but I'm pretty sure they're all prized, right? Or not all prized, but they are prized. Lower, I mean, doesn't really help me too much. I'm so afraid of a Guzma now, though. Um, let me see what we can do with this. I can't really attach energies. Mew could be useful. I mean, Mew can attack. Oh god, the servers are about to go offline. What? I didn't know that. Alright, we're top deck mode. We gotta finish this game in 10 minutes. <laughs> we'll just blow her for the sake of blowing. Thin in my hand a little bit. Alright, let's do this. Come on. <laughs> Please do not have Guzma. Spirit Tomb will win the game if I can just knock out this dude. Come on, I have 10 minutes to do this. I'm not changing the deck. You guys saw, by the way, for those of you guys that skipped to the end of the video, because I know some of y'all do that, uh, <laughs> we didn't adjust the deck midway through the video to add a Marshadow. So, just in case. No, the Acerola! <laughs> no! Alright, so now we're going to need two energies. One to damage this, because if we can get one Shrine plus one damage on this dude, that's going to be really good. I'm not going to ever damage this thing until the turn I attack, right? So we're going to damage this dude for three damage real quick, like... Um, oh, there's a, oh, mmm, mmm, because this is going to hit for 2200, so I, I'm one damage short so far, so far, but I'm going to have to do this, right? Um, yeah. My opponent's exactly two prizes. No! Did I mess up? Oh, I could have won. Not really, but I could have got close. Oh, well. Let me, uh, Psy Power this dude. I should have, I should have, uh... I should have attacked him the other go. I got pressured. I got pressured. I got distracted. All right. So we only hit 2200. So we're actually 10 damage short from winning the game. All I need to do is find a... So many cards. There's like Cynthia or Bills um, or Shrine. I have... Okay. So I have one Bills, three Cynthias. Those could help me get Shrine. There's two Shrines, right? So we have a lot of outs here. But it's all it all comes down to this. Do we have enough outs to win? Oh my goodness, yes. Alright, so it's all down to this. We only hit 2200 right now. We literally just need to try and punishment. Come on, game. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, uh, no, we lose. No! <laughs> we were so close! Ah, I'm so mad! I was so mad. Oh, we were so close. Can I... Mm. There's no way for me to dig any harder, is there? Oh, it sucks so hard. Oh, we were so close. Oh, we had two shrines. We even had a black market to stall for another turn. God, we were so close. Just 10 damage short. Ah! <laughs> okay, you know what? It's fine. We just need a shrine to stick one more turn, man. God, the fact that this is why I was playing four shrines beforehand, guys, because it's so important to find shrine when you play this deck. Versus Reshi's art. Ah! Eh! Literally just needed to find one shrine and we won the game. I'm so mad. I'm actually super mad. I'm mad because I can't even get another game because it's time to go. Because that was a totally winnable game. We were just one card short. That was an instant. That is a literally a winnable game. Like Reshi's Art is such an easy matchup for this deck because of that. But unfortunately, the cards did not do show up on the table when we wanted them. Uh, it might be time to put in a fourth shrine. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, the Ultra Beast decks are really... the uh, Not Ultra Beast. The... Uh, the Tag team decks are super easy for this deck to beat. It's really easy to put yourself up to five damage counters, uh, thanks to damage movery and your own ability and rainbow energy, right? So hitting for and hustle belt means that you hit for 220 damage, and then shrine is just one full turn of shrine between like both you and your opponent knocks out Pika Rom, if there's Pika Roms on the board, and then uh, even if even if that doesn't come into play, like there's still like Buzzmosa, but that was prized, so we could never use the Buzzmosa to win the game. Buzzmosa could have totally won us the game, by the way, um, on the right turns. Mm. Because then, like, if I knew Buzzmosa was in the deck, right, what I could have gone for was attach the Dark Energy here and hit them for the big damage, 2200 damage, and then use the Fairmosa to GX for game, right? There's so many outs that we had, but unfortunately, we just not did not find them at the right turns. So maybe you can try adding more. I, I still think you need two Mews, because not only is Mew good for damaging the tag teams for putting them in range of this, but it's also good for just, like, preventing your bench versus wheezing. Uh, one card I could see you cutting is maybe one damage mover for another Shrine. If you want to add another Shrine, of course, so that your my bad luck doesn't exactly 
show for you, but it is what it is. Regardless though, we did show off that we are a very powerful non-GX deck that can hit tag team numbers, as well as not need to hit tag team numbers. Like, there's a lot of pressure when it comes to playing against the tag teams because you want to make sure you're at five damage counters as quickly as possible. But if you're playing something against Zap, like if you're playing against Zappies or something, you don't really need five damage counters. Three and Hustle Belt is enough. Uh, two is enough against a lot of their other attackers too. Like, it's so easy to like attack because you don't, you're a lot less, um, um, what's the card? You're not less combo based, right? Which means that you're a lot less demanding of a deck. All you gotta do is put down your spirit tombs and attack, like swing, and then you swing every turn. While decks like um, Zapdos, they need to switch every turn or have like you know proper proper turns. Yeah, if that makes any sense. Like they have to make sure that they have the right combination of cards and be switching every turn to take knockouts, um, or like find enough comparisons which they can only do so many times. And then whenever we have cards like Buzzle in the active, that's harder for them to take a knockout on because they're going to need like both switching cards and electro powers. Uh, Such Hammer can come into play and take right knockouts at the right time. Um, same with Kartana. Of course, Kartana is a little bit easier to knock out. And then Buzzmosa can finish off things at the right time. It does make me want to play Beast Energy though on Buzzmosa just in they got knockouts like Jirachi and other 68 P Pokemon. But because we have access to cards like Jet Punch and obviously Such Hammer and things to put them into range, it's, it's still pretty handy if you can get it off at the right time. Uh, so I'm not too sure. I could, I could definitely see you playing a one of Beast Energy as well. But you don't want to cut the damage movers too much because damage movers are kind of your lifeline uh, in a lot of cases. Spe specifically against Muck, uh, not, not Muck, Weezing. Between damage mover and Mew, the Weezing matchup is so much easier. Like it's so much, it's so much, it's not an auto loss anymore. It just becomes like a real matchup at that point. Because you can damage mover. All your damage onto one Pokemon to let them take that one knockout. You have double field blower that can gear to the right, the right um, what's it called? A double field blower gets rid of the the, uh, the spell tags at the right time. Uh, between bills and that, it should be easy to find those cards. Um, so yeah, I think the deck's pretty good. I, I actually really like the deck. I think it's a lot of fun. So Spear Tomb Box, I guess, is what you could call this. Spirit Tomb Ultra Beast, Ghostly Beast, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Let me know what you guys think of the, of the deck down below. Let me know if you guys want to see me play this deck again in the future. I love playing like decks like this, and I would love to like revisit decks um, if you guys want me to. Although I might just upload like an hour long, two hour long video of me just playing the same deck for a long time. Might be just like a stream recap as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If we can drop a like, subscribe to all that good jazz. Remember, all Unbroken Bonds, Codes, and Booster Boxes uh, for people to answer the comment question there. Just leave general comments. Um, all comments are entries, but only one entry per video, of course. Like the video, it helps me so much. Subscribe, because we're trying to reach 10K. Like, what I want to go into 2020 knowing I have 10K subs and I could work a little bit harder on this channel. Because once you reach 10K, like in theory, my videos should be getting a lot more views if I have 10K subscribers. And if I, have, if I get a lot more views on videos, I could attempt to do this full time. Uh, not full-time, but I can attempt to do this and actually make money off of it because if I can actually make money off this Then I can upload more often right now. I upload I tried to upload every other day um, During like big set release hype and stuff like that, but I could upload a lot more I could upload daily um, Depending on what you guys want to see me do and yeah, I'm excited I really hope we can hit that 10k number. That would be amazing. So let's try to hit 10k um, So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to all the good jazz. And I'll see you guys next time with another TCGO video